Hey guys, I'm Will, and I promise nobody is better for this than me. I love taking orders from strangers, I know everything about toppings, and I always get the job done in 30 seconds. Whether it's Italian, Mexican, or Chinese, I will allow anything in my home. No matter how long I end up on my throne, I am the proud king of this domain. Look, there is no question that I am the best around. That's why you should pick me for NBC's America's Next Fast Food Entrepreneur. Good morning, everybody. Will here. Welcome to the video set. As you guys know, I am Canadian. I have more Tim Hortons at my fingertips than any American could possibly imagine, but that is about it. So since I'm in the States and I'm on vacation, I thought there was no better way to spend my day than to immerse myself in all the fast food I've been missing out on from across the border. So today we're gonna to go to a bunch of fast food spots I have never been to in my life. We're gonna taste test them, review them. I'm gonna let you guys know if I think they should come to Canada or they should stay exactly where they are. So let's do it. All right, guys, so I have never been to a drive-in in my life, so don't really know how this works, if I'm even doing this right right now. Oh, you're gonna press to order. Okay. My name is Luis, how can I help you? Can I please get the French toast sticks, please? Uh, might ruin your mood, I'm sorry, but we're sold out of French toast sticks right now. Can you? Can I get the supersonic burrito? We can do that. Okay, apparently I paid. So, unfortunately they did not have the French toast sticks. I finally got over my traumatic experience when I worked that bachelor party in Paris and I wanted to get some French toast sticks, but you order and you pay here on your own, they kind of walk it out to you, and that, that, that's pretty cool. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, you're, it, did you try to pay with card? Yeah. It still doesn't work sometimes. It didn't go through. Didn't. No. <laughs> oh, it didn't go through. No. <laughs> I thought I was going to get away with the free burrito. <laughs> Damn. So this burrito right here is 840 calories. Damn. Thank God I didn't get the French toast sticks. If this coffee is any indication on how this breakfast burrito is going to be, I am forecasting some food poisoning and an underwear change very, very shortly. So with the name Supersonic, I'm kind of fearful that this was designed to hit my brown note, but this is a fat daddy. 840 calories here for a singular burrito is ridiculous. So it doesn't look all that special. All business on the outside. We've got to extract that party on the inside. So let's get into it. Got the sauce here. So the sauce is not really for the burrito, it's for me to kind of take home because some people put food in uh, places that they enjoy in their personal lives, guys. I love the smell a burrito gives you before you wrap your mouth around it and go end to end. I don't really know what ingredient I'm eating, but I think I encountered a hash brown. And is there sausage in there? There is sausage in there, but not that much. Don't be shy, show me your meat. So there it is on the inside. Oh, I just lost sausage, it's all good. The sausage has a little bit of a bite. It kind of tickles your innards a bit. Yep, I just hit tater tot land. Got some jalapeno in there, got some tomatoes. Definitely a more adulterated breakfast burrito than what I'm used to, because usually you just get egg, cheese, and meat, but they actually took some effort here and made it kind of nice. So now let's add some of this sauce. Damn, usually when you roll something this good, it's illegal. But I, 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 oh! So this is just called the signature sauce. Kind of what I call my sauce when I go to the sperm bank. Oh dear. That is good. I don't even know what it is. But it has like a smokiness to it that's gonna throw you off a bit. Sonic has this game here. I was very, I was very frightful after having this coffee. So my overall synopsis on the Sonic burrito, they did a good job here. I would wish that they kind of like seared the outside and kind of went places that other places weren't willing to go. And then that would be the perfect breakfast burrito. But again, like I said, 
they added the jalapeno, they added the tater tots, the tomatoes, they really kind of stepped it up a bit, kind of adulterated the breakfast burrito, which I do enjoy. This sauce was amazing. The coffee was eh, the experience of the drive-thru was eh, but that could have just been an off day. So would I bring it to Canada? I would, I'd give it a second shot. I would have this again when it's warm, but finding a place to eat, not in the car, took a little bit of time. So giving it the benefit of the doubt, nine out of 10. Second stop of the day, we are going to Jack in the Box. And for some reason, I'm very nervous about Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box and Long John Silver's have had a very bad rap in the media. For some reason, I don't know, you get like those stories about like the rats and the burgers and stuff. So I'm a little bit nervous, but we're gonna get a bunch of different things, taste test and see what Jack in the Box is all about. You can get a slice of cheesecake on the side if you want. Obnoxious. Instantaneously, Jack in the Box has earned some brownie points because they have Powerade Zero on deck. So we got a bunch of different things. So it's like a Jack in the Box kind of like tapas situation. So. We got some tiny tacos, which is very interesting to me. The second I saw it on the menu, I was like, I gotta get them. So we got them right here. They come in a pack of 15. We also got an egg roll. They have egg rolls at Jack in the Box. I love a good egg roll. I love an average egg roll. I'm just happy to be here right now. So we got that on the side. And then we got some curly fries. Whenever you're given the opportunity of choice between a fry and a curly fry, you go with the curly fry because you know they are delicious. Although a good curly fry is very hard to come by. So we got that, and we also got a grilled chicken sandwich on sourdough bread just to be healthy right now. And we're gonna kickstart off this buffet with the tiny tacos. So let's get into it. So they are like a hard shell situation right here. They look a little bit difficult to stuff, but I'd probably prefer that than throwing a hot dog down a hallway. They smell good, smell authentic. Grants you a gentle crunch. I tell you what, man, like me, they are small, but they are mighty. They have a zing to it. Oh my God. It tastes like a heart attack in my mouth, but I kind of like it. It's oily enough in a good way. I could pop these and I wouldn't stop. Okay, so then I'll try this uh, grilled chicken sandwich. So when it comes to fast food places, you kind of you can kind of tell what place is good based off the meat. Like Chick-fil-A has its A-game. It's a very honest piece of meat. It's like, it is the real thing. It's like an actual chicken. Places like this, you never really know what you're gonna get until you open the box. So let's see what we jack in the box. Chicken looks suspicious. My eyebrows are raising a little bit. That is okay. Well, I'd be damned. That's good, it tastes like quality. Like the, the bacon just tastes like it has been out for a long time. The chicken is decent. The sourdough bread is soft and hard at the same time. And they like panini and sear it. Okay. Okay, curly fry time. They look seasoned to perfection. It's such a pleasurable experience on the tongue. It's like a potato garden hose. Oh my god. My god, this is good. I ordered way too much food though. I'm probably gonna eat the whole thing. About five inches, decent girth. And uh, let's do it. Now this one just saturates your mouth with some oil, man. And my fingers. Like, you do not feel good about yourself when you eat this. Every time you bite, you squeeze and you like extract some oil and it's like you're drinking oil while simultaneously eating this it's not the most pleasurable experience overall i am super impressed with jack in the box this is actually pretty good it tastes somewhat fresh those tacos are really really good the fries are you know up there for me like they actually took it up a notch and just didn't do the singular fry you know it's just it's just good so overall out of 10 i'm gonna go another nine out of ten it just it proved me wrong and yeah, so why would I wish that this was in Canada? Absolutely. Like in Canada, we don't have much stuff. We have McDonald's, we have Burger King, Wendy's, and that's all I can really think of. So Jack in the Box, come to Canada. We are here at the gym with Mr. Dylan McKenna, about to get into a shoulders and arms workout. Then after that, we're gonna be doing some boxing. You're in yeah, it's gonna be fun. We'll see how you look on the pads. Okay, yeah. so 
He's, he's uh, just a, a casual IFBB pro as well, so I think you're, he's, uh, he's done that, he's been there, he's done that, but now he kind of wants to go and try to knock out Logan Paul maybe, is that the next goal? I don't, I'm not calling out yet, but give me a few more months training with him, we'll see, yeah. Okay, so we're going to hop into a workout, he's going to lead the way, starting off with some standing overhead press, so let's get into it. Kofi wants to do a pretty sick edit, so I'm giving him free reign to do whatever he wants, so it's all you, man. Y'all should never give me this camera, let's go! ready to fight on this night, you better just run for your life. Okay, so we just wrapped up shoulders and arms with Dylan. So now we're gonna do some boxing now because this is what this is something he does all the time, right? It is. Uh, just recently though, yes. I just just recently got into it. I love it. <laughs> so he says a typical day. No, actually, not a typical day. He yeah, like, he something. bike rides forty miles, then does some sparring and then trains. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been like I a, should probably stop doing that all the time, but I do do it. <laughs> so it's been kind of like a big like kind of like. 180 for you with like your approach to like fitness and nutrition because he also yeah. says he's very holistic yeah. with his food now he eats all, all natural organic and yeah then, so I, I used to like be you know I just wanted to get bigger all the time like I was, I was kind of telling him this and yeah. now I'm at the point where like I just want to be athletic lean down a little bit feel better not have to eat like as much food trying to get so big all the time so I enjoy kind of getting back into the cardio sports a lot more yeah. one oh easy one two easy relax Boxing is deceivingly cardiovascular demanding. So I heard actually boxing and like soccer are like the hardest like cardiovascular demanding sports yep. that you can actually do. So don't sleep on some boxing guys. Like you can't sleep on boxing. five minutes in the ring and you're, you're toast. Yeah. Your legs are gonna be gone, your arms can't even move, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> about the YouTube TikTok for next year. You want to do it? Let's do it. We'll do it. I'll blow up on TikTok. Yeah. You keep doing YouTube. We'll do YouTube. Yeah. So I mean, if you if you compete, like in bodybuilding, yeah. are you gonna do this as like your cardio or no? I'll probably cut down the boxing a little bit because I want it more regimented, exactly how much I'm burning, etc. You wanna go? Yeah. So I, I saw with sort of the the hook. I noticed he was kind of going more with like the full body, right? Yeah. Whereas so I'm usually kind of like this. Yeah. So the mistake people make is they want to go like this, like your arm. Your yeah. bicep's not strong enough to produce such a blow. Yeah. Okay. So do one right here. Okay. So. Yeah. And pretend Back you want to pretend right? you're like, you know, blowing them out of the park. So don't stop right there. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That's an uppercut. So now do one, two, slow, three, four, slow. So. <laughs> yep. One time. Good. Yeah. Yep. Again. Yep. Good. Oh man. <laughs> I need to get back on the cardio game. Shit. <laughs> oh. So the fast food today I've been eating. That's enough for me. Just wrapped up a solid training session with Dylan, and now we are at In and Out. So I believe it's just a West Coast thing. So it, it has a very well-known and long-standing reputation, and there's a, there's two groups of people. There's one group of people that say, you know, whenever I have a chance, I'm going to come to In and Out, and then there's another group of people that say it's overrated. It's not that great. It kind of just tastes exactly like McDonald's. So what we just ordered is some animal-style fries and a cheeseburger, and we are going to see for ourselves what the hype is all about. Oh man! Well, oh baby, I'm excited. 
All right guys, so we're in full character mode. We've got the hat on and time to get into a cheeseburger and animal style fries. So, you know, the last time I went to a place called In-N-Out, I left with something much worse than Mad Cow. So, feeling a bit weird about this. So I'm used to eating my tacos animal style. I've never had fries like this. So let's go into just a fry by itself first. It looks exactly like McDonald's fry. Tastes exactly like a McDonald's fry. If I was blindfolded, I would think I'm at McDonald's right now. Now for the animal style fry. So I actually have no idea what it is. So I believe it's cheese. I see some onions and then a mayo type of sauce situation. So let's get a little bit of that. I think I need a fork. Okay, learning things. There you go. The, the, the fries need the animal style stuff on top. Like that, that onion makes the whole entire thing. I will say though, like by itself, the fries were really not that great. This actually saves it, so. <clears throat> so I don't really know like what I think. Like the product itself, like the actual fry, <clears throat> doesn't really do it for me. So now moving on to the burger. Just a classic cheeseburger. So I believe the sauce that's inside this is the same that's on the fries. I feel like I'm gonna trigger a lot of people right now, but this tastes exactly like any fast food burger I've ever had in my entire life. It could be McDonald's, it could be Wendy's. It could really be anything, but it's good. It's definitely good. But I really don't get the hype. Like it kind of tastes like a Big Mac in a way. The bun is just definitely different. It doesn't have that like trademark McDonald's bun, but it's good. I think like the big catch of this place has to be that sauce in this freaking onion situation. This is the money. Oh, I mean, if, if in and out like announced on national TV that they would never come to Canada, I couldn't even you know, explain to you how little I would care because it's not really doing it for me. I would never actually order this often. If I wanted fries, I'd go to any other place. I wanted a burger, I'd go to any other place. I think it's overhyped, guys. I'm sorry. If you guys, if you guys are not okay with that, I, I don't know what to do. I apologize, but. It's just really not doing it for me. So should it come to Canada? I don't think so. All right, guys, so the last stop of the day is Panda Express. If it's in Canada, I am unaware. So Chinese food is one of my many food demons because I love it so much and I tend to overeat it. It kind of sucks that everything that I love in life is either illegal, immoral, or fattening. So let's get into this. So my general, like, I've usually been operating under the policy that with Chinese food, it's best not to know how it was prepared. So we got some orange chicken, some Angus steak, which was on the walk smart menu. So don't walk hard, walk smart. And we got some super greens. So being in Denver and with the competition, I think it's pretty bold for Panda Express to say super greens, if you know what I'm trying to say. And uh, here we go. So right off the bat, the orange chicken is like apparently the star of the show here, and it just looks very uniform and mass manufactured. I'm gonna go in. Sauce, pretty nice. That ratio of batter to meat is actually pretty good. You usually don't get that at places like this. Now for the Wok Smart. So the Wok Smart is 180 calories for the serving. Got some tender steak, yo. I feel like it's okay for me to use a fork in a situation like this because I feel like this Chinese food can't get any less cultured than this, but you know, like with many things, I am not a purist, I accept deviation. So now for the greens. Nice steamed, no, no butter, no oil. Okay, overall, very healthy meal. It is good. That black pepper sauce has something special in there. I believe it's sugar. And if you guys wanna to go to places like this and you like the orange chicken, still get the orange chicken, but then balance it out. Don't get the rice, don't get the fried rice. Always find, pick and choose what's important to you that day. And you can make really anything work in your diet. So would I want this in Canada? Hell yes, this is so good. I'd actually probably make this a staple in my diet if this was in Canada. This would definitely be thrown into my repertoire. Super, super solid, healthy. It seems to be a little bit less on the oil than what I expected. So Panda Express, come to Canada, please. So you guys like my little health tip here and then Kofi behind the camera, this is what he got. 
You got Yo. some uh, orange chicken. It's just a little bit and, of rice, and bro. And fried rice. It's just a little bit of rice. Have I not taught you anything? You start. You're starting to like donuts now, and then this. Yeah, I honestly have never eaten donuts up until like this trip, and I've now eaten more donuts you than need, my body weight. You just weight. need an Apple Watch now, and you're officially part of the gang. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'll change this. I'll change it. Yeah. I'll change it eventually. Be better. Super, super solid meal at Panda Express. The food is so flavorful, it, like, it engages your mind, not just your palate. But the one good thing about leaving is that you get a fortune cookie. So we're gonna read it right now. Hopefully it says, your seconds will turn into minutes. Be willing to admit your mistakes. Hmm. I do, but I'm never wrong. Back at the Airbnb, and my God, do I need to get into the shower because I am just seeping fast food oil right now. But my overall synopsis on the day was Sonic was really, really good. They did things that other places were not willing to do yet. They added the jalapeno, the tomatoes, the tater tots, the breakfast burrito. I know people are gonna say, because people have been saying to me already, why did you go to Sonic and get the breakfast burrito? Because it was breakfast, guys. I know I should have gone and get other stuff, but the fact that it was breakfast and I got that, and it was a wild card, you know, dark horse menu item, it just shows how good that place really is. And then we went to Jack in the Box. So Jack in the Box had a very diverse menu. They had the curly fries, which were honestly, probably one of the best things of the day. If I was going for a cheat day back at home, I would always 10 out of 10 go for the curly fries. They had the tiny tacos, which were super, super good. And then we went to Panda Express and I just thought it tasted honest. It wasn't too oily. The meat was just up front. It, just, it tasted really tasty and flavorful. They had a lot of options that were healthy that I would have back at home all the time. It'd be thrown into my repertoire for sure because I love Chinese food. And then we went to In-N-Out and In-N-Out to me was just the definition of an ensemble. It needs all the ingredients. It's very reliant on the animal style sauce, but the fries on its own just tasted like stale, unsalty McDonald's fries. The burger just tasted like a burger. It just tasted like any other fast food burger so you know if someone was with me they're like will do you want to go to mcdonald's or in and out i'd be like i don't care you choose so that was my overall opinion so the moral of the story is canada needs to step up their fast food game so i'm going to wrap up the video here if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next one